you very much, Helen. That was uh, a great uh, start uh, to get us all in our seats. And wow, let's see your faces in front of me. That is absolutely wonderful. Um, I've got to say, this is one of the high points of my year. And, um, and it's, a, it's a real delight to be sharing today as we sort of talk about successes, share excellent uh, new ideas and innovations, do a bit of networking, and for me, a little bit of gossiping with folk I haven't seen for a while, which is also a great pleasure. Now, this is my third uh, annual conference, and uh, this year uh, it's quite interesting because it marks a particular milestone. It is 10 years since we went to all the graduate uh, pre-registration nurse education in Wales. A whole decade. Uh, it seems to have gone just like that, I don't know about you. And um, it's 11 years for going to all midwifery education. So we've come to a particular milestone, which is quite further advanced than other parts of the UK. So an interesting point for us to come together here today. Now events such as this do not happen without a considerable amount of hard work and uh, commitment uh, by a lot of people and also the generous support of sponsors. And I particularly want to thank uh, the NHS employers this year for being our main sponsor. So thank you so much for those who have contributed to today. And to be honest, today also works by your engagement, your enthusiasm and uh, contribution to the discussion within the breakout sessions by engaging with the poster uh, authors and presenters but also making sure that you pick up things that you can take away and say, do you know what? I'm going to give that a go. Let me think about how that will uh, change my practice. These good ideas, perhaps I'll follow this up and do something with it. Now, uh, we have a lot of speakers here today, and uh, to be honest, uh, it's what's quite interesting for me. Taking the title of Together for Care, standing here within a football stadium, and you could say, yes, absolutely, a perfect venue, because this is all about working together, that's around team working, it's around uh, an ethos shared by team members. And it applies equal to football as it does to the NHS and the delivery of health services. The only thing I shouldn't comment on is how that ethos actually helps save the Premier League, because it is a little sensitive around here at the moment, shan't touch up there. This is all about sharing good ideas, and um, I find this, this time of year particularly a reflective moment. Uh, we've just had um, a celebration of Florence Nightingale's birthday, so we had the International Day of the Nurse, and uh, the week before that, the International Day of the Midwife. And it's useful for us, I think, to take stock about what our contribution to uh, care is, both here in Wales and on a wider and more international stage. Because there are a lot of challenges across the world, and Many of the people working in Wales do reach outside our borders and have contributed to our Wales for Africa program and have um, participated in things that are raising the profile of nurses and midwives across the world. And so very well done to all of those involved in that. Now, if you like, I uh, suppose as a point of reflection back on the year, you could say it's been a year of two halves, a game of two halves. And um, I didn't want to know, these are awful puns. Helen made me do it, that's all I can say. She said to me, you're going to be in a football stadium, do, do your best. I don't know anything about football, so I'm doing my best. Okay? Just, just hang in there. So, a, a year of two halves. We've had challenges and we've had successes. And it would be quite easy for me to stand here focusing too much on the challenges, but I do want to spend a few moments before I look back on all the successes and the inspiring things that have been happening in Wales. So, if you like, looking back at the media stories that have been hitting us, we had last summer the Francis Inquiry reporting to failures in care and staffs. Closer to home, just a few weeks ago, we had a similarly very challenging report trusted to care into uh, caring hospitals in South Wales. Very tough for the staff working in these organisations. <coughs> Those people come in every day wanting and desiring and achieving a good job. However, there are lessons to be learned when you have reports like this, and I think it's a, a, a point for us now to start um, saying, okay, is there something different we need to be doing about the care of our older, um, frail, elderly patients coming into our services? We've had a number of reports, uh, like the two I've just referred to, but we've also had the Older People's Commissioner talk about dignified care in our hospitals. So there's, for me, I think, uh, a point in time here now that we need to do some honest reflection. 
And this last year has been uh, sort of filled with talk about let's make sure our staffing levels are right. And I'm really pleased to see that our minister actually committed additional funds to uh, increase the, the nursing staffing levels on our medical and surgical wards. It was the only thing out of the Francis um, response that actually had additional funding. We've had a, a wonderful year of testing out and developing an acuity tool to help local decisions about making sure we've got the right level of staff with the right skill mix on our wards. And I have looked across Wales and our staff levels and skill mix have improved over the last year. However, it doesn't matter if you get your skill mix right, your staffing numbers right, if the uh, value set and the culture within your organisation is one that does not value or listen to the patients and actually engage with them about what is best for them. And so, uh, yes, by all means, let us get certain uh, basic things right, like the staffing levels, but let's not kid ourselves that there's something that we need to do collectively as a profession to say, all right, what are we doing about talking to, listening to, and making decisions with our patients? We have to make sure that we turn some of the rhetoric that you hear from people, such as I and the minister, when we talk about co-production and prudent healthcare. These are wonderful terms we knock around. But what we're really talking about is doing things with our patients, engaging and listening to what they're telling us to decide what is best for them. They know what is best for them, and we're not doing that well enough. Now, I said it's a game of two hearts, so that's my challenges bit aside, but I, th I thought I could not pass up this moment without giving that um, uh, feeling that I have. So I'm now going to focus a little bit on some of the successes from last year. And I've got a half a page here. I could have actually filled a whole page of examples. So I apologize to those of you who are thinking, is she going to talk about me and what I've done? Uh, because there are a huge number of successes we can celebrate. So this is just a, a snapshot, if you like. We've put out a couple of bundles this year. Care bundles give us a, a proper evidence base uh, and around the practices we should be doing. And I'm particularly pleased that we had a, a launch in January for a, a care bundle for people with learning disabilities who are accessing acute services. They are the most vulnerable of our population and acute services are not designed to deal with them very well. And we have come out of a um, case of failure of care in the past we've actually set out a much better way of looking after them. So I'm particularly proud of that piece of work that was done uh, with uh, service. We have tested and uh, trained on the new acuity tool for inpatient care. It is ready to go live and uh, a letter will be winging its way out to service to say, right, this is how you're going to use it this year. So this is a big step change for us because it's a national approach to workforce planning uh, on a, a local level. We have seen a central funding for advanced practice for the very first time. Up until now, we've been talking, sorry, <coughs> sorry for host again. Up until this time, we've set out our aspirations around our advanced practice by setting out a framework, but we've never actually funded development. And so this year, we've actually put money where our mouth is, and the funding is uh, designed to grow as time goes by as we take on the advantages of uh, advanced practice within our services. We've continued our focus on healthcare associated infections and we had a whole Team Wales event um, over a day and a half that looked at where we've got to. We've ma made massive improvements in preventing healthcare infections, but every single preventable infection that happens is a failure for that individual. <coughs> it affects their long-term outcome, the length of stay in the hospital, costs us a lot of money, and if it's preventable, then we should have been doing something about that. So this drive for zero tolerance um, has been refreshed this year, and I encourage all of you to, to get involved in, in that agenda. We've done a complete revamp of the fundamentals of care audit, uh, and the uh, data collection uh, took part in the autumn. I read this morning the report, the first cut of the report, and it shows high levels of patient satisfaction with the way that we deliver services in Wales. That's very reassuring uh, to me, and I'm sure uh, to you as well, when you hear the negative, it colours your impression of what actually is going on. But you know, 96% of our, our patients are saying, do you know what, I was treated with care, my dignity was respected, I was engaged with what was happening to me. Those are kinds of things that uh, I think we should focus on. What our patients are telling us is it, a different story. We've had lots of people have awards this year. 
And uh, I was particularly pleased, uh, I don't know if she's in the audience, um, Helen Dinham, who won my CNO award at uh, the uh, RCN Nurse of the Year last November, then went on to become the British Journal of Nursing Nurse of the Year. So it was wonderful to see somebody come from Wales that actually is recognised uh, on an international stage. A little more poignantly uh, for me, uh, as a member of staff in the past of Swansea University, I was absolutely delighted to see that they got the Student Nursing Times Award for the best place to train for pre-registration nursing. Now it's poignant because um, the head of school uh, there recently passed away, Melanie Jasper, and, um, and uh, my condolences to, to their family, uh, to her family at the moment. Uh, it is a, a very sad loss uh, for somebody so young to be taken from us. But uh, if you'd like to see the award, um, Dr. Barton, who is sitting in the front here, a dear friend, has brought it with him. So if you'd like to go to the stand, um, I did get a little concern when he says, come and see my award, Jean. I thought, uh, this is some our kind award, of... Our award. Uh, our award. Uh, well, that's not quite your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I did think to myself, is this some sort of come and see my etchings, Jean? So, um, <laughs> but anyway, it's wonderful to see prizes and there's, there are lots, lots of other awards uh, given out at different ceremonies uh, across the year. And I particularly enjoyed the RCN News of the Year ceremonies last autumn for, for that very reason. I also want to, to say thank you to a couple of people. Um, I visited the Firing Line Museum in Cardiff Castle uh, a few years back with my very, very aged uncle. Yeah, he's 93 this year. Uh, still runs rings around me. Anyway, he wanted to go and have a little look at the Military Museum. And when I visited it, I thought, it'd be fantastic if we could showcase Betsy Cadwallader and actually the role of nurses in wartime. So uh, I said to the curator, would you be interested? And she said, yes, that's okay. So I went to Professor Donna Mead and uh, I said, could you help me out? And she says, absolutely. So she, with the support of the Royal College of Nursing, have actually now got a display in the Firing Line Museum. It talks about the life of Betsy Cadwalder. There are uniforms and memorabilia. And there are going to be packs going out to schools talking about an iconic nurse from the Crimean War and about the contribution that uh, nurses make within a military conflict uh, setting. And staying with that theme, I have to say I was humbled when I went on a visit to the uh, 203 Welsh Field Hospital on their deployment in Camp Bastion, Afghanistan. I saw genuinely world-class care given by nurses from Wales, and radiographers and biomedical scientists and all the other folk. And it's really tough. It's, these are not uh, um, luxurious settings, and I was, I was really, really humbled by what I saw, and uh, I'm really delighted to see they've all come back safely from deployment, uh, and very well done to them. I don't know any in the audience here today, but uh, thank you for going that extra mile for, for our, our troops. So, what have we got looking forward to? Well, a particular area for me that I'm excited about coming this year is that um, uh, with the work of the Royal College Midwives with Cardiff University, there is every possibility that they will become the only midwifery um, World Health Organization research collaborating center for the whole of the 53 countries of the European Union. That means a spotlight on midwifery practice in Wales. I'm hugely impressed by that. Yeah. It means that uh, we'll be able to advise and showcase good midwifery care uh, and help guide other parts of the European Union and uh, the European region which have uh, a very different uh, set of challenges to, to maternal care than we do here. So I think my time is more than up. Um, Helen will start going, stop Jean, stop. Um, so I, I want to just reflect on what I said to you last year and the year before. Every year I set you the same challenge which is take something away today. I don't care how small it is. Take something and go and do something with it. I hope some of you reflected on that last year and said, you know what, I'm gonna go and test something out. I'm gonna have a conversation with somebody. I'm going to read more about that. So please, that's what I'm setting you as a task this year. Please go and pick something and do something with it. Otherwise, this is just a nice day out. Now let's try to make something better as a result of this.